I'm really proud. You know, it's it's a special moment for everybody, for the people in the club, for the fans, for the city. Uh, having a really strong competitor for the past nine years and having them winning uh, in a row, and at the same time, you know, the last time we won was actually about 11 years ago. Uh, having an important title, important trophies, um, it shows that the work that we are uh, been working on in the past five years. Uh, on, the, on the right track, on the right ways. And obviously, uh, seeing the city are so happy, the fans are so happy on the streets, it's something really um, satisfying. The shame is the fans couldn't be inside the stadium. What has COVID meant uh, for you at, at such a great club with not having the fans in the stadium? Uh, and what has it meant for international football, do you think? Unfortunately, uh, COVID and the whole pandemic situation really changed the landscape of football, really impact a lot of industry who are related to offline services, offline experience, um, the consumers, the consumptions, that which is related to um, physical or, or in-person um, experience. So football or sports industry is one of the industry or fall into that category. So without the fans in the stadium, uh, without experiencing, uh, seeing the game in person, um, or closing a lot of stores, restaurants, eventually damaged a lot to our industry. If you look at um, only 1920 season alone, the overall European football industry lost 2 billion or 3 billion euros. So if you combine that with two seasons, that's double, which is around five, or six billions uh, overall in terms of damage for many, many clubs or people who are related to the football industry. So obviously that's gonna be something not gonna be recovered uh, anytime soon. So for us, uh, for the competition, the quality is definitely uh, not gonna be as the same um, before COVID. Um, and all the clubs today, we have to think about how to cutting the costs, how to going to be still sustainable uh, in the next couple of years when we're recovering from COVID. Um, at the same time, um, how to engage with the fans, or with the audiences who are, we're losing in the past couple of years. So how to making sure utilizing the digital platforms, utilizing the social medias, utilizing the fans who are not able to travel, who are not able to see the players, the games, in the stadium, um, that's the key topic or key conversations that we're having. But of course, at the same time, there are some things were built up even before COVID, which in terms of cost structure, in terms of a system sustainability of the football club. So eventually it forced us, uh, even after COVID, to introducing new products, uh, new changes into our system and then testing the water to see what our consumers or fans would like to, to see. It, it sounds like a, a real period of change for you, or projected change. I mean, COVID was one very big issue, and you've listed some other issues as well, uh, especially the digital uh, issues to reach the fans. But there was also the issue of the European Super League, wasn't there? Do you think um, uh, that will be tried again in the future? I think overall, um, this whole incident shows that we have to work in with FIFA and UEFA to really improving the quality of the games, um, to understand what other changes we need in the market and to listen to the fans and understand what other things that will be providing a better experience for the fans. Um, but pandemic and the COVID situation really pushed us to see um, you know, these changes or innovations are needed in the market. Um, doesn't matter what kind of format, doesn't matter in what kind of ways, but eventually understanding, um, you know, the, the market, understanding the current uh, situation after COVID uh, and really making sure we're able and be brave to adapt the changes and changing the whole football system and improving the system is needed. So you're trying to find ways of retaining uh, your fans' attention 
or in fact of course. Or, or getting new fans but in a younger demographic is are you worried that you're losing fans to digital media i think it's a competition that for all the entertainment industry sports industries um to really to fight with each other competing with each other to see who can providing the better and each interesting products to our consumers um now we're seeing that obviously the younger generation that I engage with digital assets more. We see that's a competition, but at the same time, it's a way to actually enlarge our fan base because these digital platform actually providing or more chances or access to um, these fans or consumers, which were not able to touch or to see uh, before. So in order to competing on these platforms, we have to make sure as football club or as, as a sports industry, we can providing or developing the contents which are interesting outside of the 90 minutes. So I think now, obviously, the younger generations are engaging on these platforms more. But slowly, we will see that every single age, uh, different age point will be engaged in these platforms uh, in different ways. So we have to targeting different age groups with different contents or things they will like. Europe's biggest clubs, uh, and you are one of those biggest clubs, certainly not just in Europe, in, around the world, um, and you have supporters all around the world. How vital to Inter are overseas markets, like China, to the future of your club? And where are the opportunities, do you think, for growth? The route overall for a for our club, for Inter, is always rooted to its local audiences, uh, to its local fans, and it's the most, most important part. But as the sports industry going global, as we see that the digital era really bring um, the contents going global, and as it says in our name, Internationale, which means a <laughs> football club representing the culture all around the world, having international inclusive um, idea and concept, uh, we see that mostly even more than 50% of our audiences are actually coming the culture outside of Italy. You know, so definitely China uh, is a very important market and the fans are interested in not only football, but also Italian culture, the information and news that are coming from Milano. So that's the part actually have the strongest growth overall for uh, a European football club at the moment. So I think if you're not only speaking to us, but speaking to any um, sports club in Europe or in other countries, the audience in China is always one of the top priorities. And that's actually something that we want to understand to learn what they need and feeding the information and providing the contents that will be interesting for them who are not able to actually travel all the way to Italy, to Milano to see the games, but actually <laughs> enjoy the contents over their phone or on the internet. Stephen Zhang from Inter Milan, thank you so much for joining us on the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you.